Fandom Chats. I'm Dee Dee. I'm Tandra. And this is Annabeth. Here we talk about anything sci-fi, fantasy related from books, TV shows, comics, games. And today we're actually talking about Time After Time. Not the movie, but the TV show that just came on at ABC. And we will be talking about the original movie some. For those of you who don't know, it actually was a movie made in 1979 mm -hmm. um, that starred Malcolm McDowell and Mary Steenburgen. And it was actually... It's one of my favorite movies. Mm -hmm. um, but their, um, ABC just came out with this new series. Mm -hmm. It's based off of the movie, but they had their own take on it. Which is really quite good. And mm -hmm. I was wondering how they were going to make it into a series. Yeah, because when I first heard that they were making it into a TV show, I was like, mm, I mean, it's a good movie, but it's kind of hard to expand that over a TV series. For those of you who are not um, familiar with it, it's basically the idea that H.G. Wells actually invented a time machine. Mm -hmm. And that his friend, um, John. John Stevenson, was actually Jack the Ripper. Mm -hmm. And was found out when he came over to... The party he was having. The party he was having. And he stole the time machine. To escape. And escaped to New York, because that's where the time machine was in the future. Mm -hmm. And basically, and it comes back to H.G. E. Wells' home, and he has to run after him and go to the future to catch him. Mm -hmm. That's all well and good for a movie. It makes a really nice mm -hmm. movie. It, it's kind it, of a romantic, romantic adventure suspense. Um, and, and so and it's a great idea that, you know, you have, you know, H.G. Wells, a real mm -hmm. historical figure, you know, Don Stevens, a real historical who come into, you know, the future mm -hmm. and... Especially a future so unlike what they're used to. Or what I mean. they expected, because mm -hmm. one of the themes that both the TV show and the movie touched on was that H.G. Wells was expecting us to have a utopia at some mm -hmm. point... Especially and, by this point in the future. And come to find out, we were, we're more so funny. <laughs> than, than what he, his time maybe even was. And seeing the future kind of almost crushed him. Yeah, and so that was kind of cool. So the TV show, what, what's your take now? Now they, I, I, Like we said, I actually think they did a great job of making it into a TV show. I mm -hmm. wasn't real sure. Yeah, because after the first couple episodes, they really start to introduce their own take on the story and add a lot of aspects to it to make it be able to be stretched out. And I thought I think they actually are doing quite a good job with it. As of the time of this recording, we've only seen about four or five episodes. So, yeah. you know, we're not quite sure how it's going to pan out over an entire season. But so far, I think they're, they're doing a great job. Yeah, they've added a, a couple of new characters, mm -hmm. a descendant of H.G. Wells, or at least somebody who's related to him in some way. Mm -hmm. um, they've uh, changed up uh, his love interest around a little bit as to who she is and, and what mm -hmm. she does. They've added a, a computer person who knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. They've added in this almost evil cabal type deal. Yeah. We're not exactly sure what's going on with that, so there's some mystery mm -hmm. stuff going on there that we're trying to figure out. They've actually uh, traveled in time a couple of other places besides mm -hmm. um, future New York. They've had to go, you know, they went back once in 1980. Mm -hmm. um, so... So far, it's been very interesting. It'll be really cool to see where they take this. Where they take it. But I really think it's got a, a good possibility of being one of those really, really good, good, you know, shows that you're going to want to hang around for a long time. And hopefully they won't cancel it after like one season or something. Hopefully not. Although look what happened with Forever. <laughs> yeah. Every time they seem to get a really good show, they don't seem to keep it. So hopefully this one will. Mm -hmm. Besides Ishi Wells, the, the actor they have, I actually don't know his name, I'm sorry. Um, the actor they have playing him is just a real doll. Mm -hmm. I think that the whole cast is really they, good. They really are. I think the Jack the Ripper guy, the guy who plays him, I think he embodies a very good sense of what we kind of would picture Jack the Ripper being like. You know, he's kind of a most devilishly handsome guy, mm -hmm. extremely charismatic, and you can see why, you know, he would get people into situations where he could kill them. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting, their take on, you know, they're wondering why he would kill prostitutes, and he's like, oh, they're easy, you know. It wasn't, yeah, they it wasn't almost so take much... a different aspect on him that he doesn't necessarily hate women, he just likes killing in general. Right, right, right. And he's a surgeon, so he likes the power of, mm -hmm. you know, Winning cutting up people and, and death, yeah, and life and death, death and the whole thing there. So, you know, I, they're, yeah, they're taking some really interesting steps, and, and I like the way they're portraying H.G. Wells. Yes, I do like that. Um, they, they seem, you know, he's very 
intrigued by the future and he, you know, appalled in some ways, but also mm -hmm. very, you know, thinking that some stuff is cool, but he, he tries to fit into everything that he's, mm -hmm. he's doing. He tries to just, you know, understand that it's not the utopia he thought it was, but he's still trying to make the best of it he can and see the good in the future that we right. put out in. And, and it's kind of cool because he has almost this boyishness, mm -hmm. you know. It's almost naivete. Because it's not the H.G. Wells that have, has written all these these novels yeah, yet. Yeah, much younger. He's younger H.G. Wells, so he hasn't had a chance. Mm -hmm. and, and he even maybe shows some things that maybe gave him some ideas for some of his famous mm -hmm. books, which is kind of cool, too. So the series really shows great promise mm -hmm. um, a lot. If you have not seen the original uh, movie, movie. It, it's just, it's got some just fascinating things. I love the, the depiction of the time machine. I, I love the way yes. it looks in the movie. And I, it's interesting in the TV show. I don't particularly like this version of it's, just it's, the way it looks. It's it, kind it, of funky it, looking. It kind of looks like a giant camera to be honest. <laughs> And it almost looks like a deep sea diver, like you go under sea with yeah, it. Like yeah. a deep sea explorer. But the one they have in the movie is just beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so, and it, it was done in 79, so it's, you know, not greatly full of any kind of great special effects or. But I think that the story is this, enough to where you don't need all Right, that. right, right. It's just a fascinating story, mm -hmm. just, you know, and, and, you know, just cool from that point of view. And then. They've, like I said, they've updated the TV show, which, you know, mm -hmm. they're bringing in some modern things, you know, cell phones and all these other things, the right. internet and all these things that weren't around in 79 that they're having to deal yeah. with. Um, so that's kind of cool mm -hmm. and, and all that. So if you have not seen either one of them, we recommend you give them a shot and definitely leave us any comments or mm -hmm. questions, anything. If you like what we do, please subscribe. Tell, Tell all, all your friends. friends. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And uh, since this was a special, we're not going to pull out um, anything out of our box or what we might do mm -hmm. in the future. And so keep in mind, you know, for our specials coming up and any particular vlogs that we do throughout the week. Right. Thank Thanks. you.